Hello everyone, this is Maria from mariascraftingcorner.com. Welcome and thank you so much for being here with me today. We're going to be working today on our third project for our paper pumpkin kit alternatives for the month of October. I have been having a lot of fun with this kit. Of course it's Christmas and I have some bias when it comes to Christmas. I absolutely love Christmas. Um, but uh, it also is such a colorful and well thought out um, kit that I, again, I just love it. If you don't know what Paper Pumpkin Kit is, it is a monthly subscription by Stampin' Up. It costs $23.50 to subscribe to it and you will get everything you need in um, that card box which I always show you guys because I just feel it's so cute um, everything you need to create the projects that they have designed for you that month and when I say everything I mean everything and I know I always <laughs> I always say that this when we are in a video but it is true like it surprises me they design these cards in a way that everything is in the kit so card bases and cutouts and whatever type of glue you're going to use so sometimes they will give you um, dimensionals most of the time it will include some glue dots that you can utilize um, it will include you know any decorations and if it's cards, it will also include the envelopes. Uh, in total, I believe it is a wonderful opportunity to start crafting, to get your feet wet, to increase your stamp collection because it brings a unique stamp set as well as your ink color collection because it brings uh, what we call stamping spots. And let me show you this is a stamping spot this is this month and this month included early espresso if you've been here before you know that i um usually try to work on alternatives because that's very enjoyable and we have a lot of fun with that i will bring to or oh, i will bring extra um my tools sorry i forgot the word tools all of a sudden so my paper trimmer scissors if i need them other types of glue because i am assuming you most likely have let's say um liquid glue or other you know types of heat of adhesives i will bring my take your pick to help me better um let's see my stamping blocks and i always show you guys this um when you get your first paper pumpkin kit you will get a um, stamping uh, block and i rather use the ones that stamping up gives us and as you can tell so much thicker and so much easier to use right so i will use those let's see what else i think that's pretty much it for this video sometimes i bring my blending brushes so i can create color cardstock from the ink we have available i've done that in the previous videos um if you want to check them out i'm going to link them up here for you so you can um, see them if you haven't um the only other thing i usually bring is either black or white cardstock because um it just helps me with the creations and whatever i am creating so i don't think i'm thinking if there's anything else i don't think so if you don't have a demonstrator and would like a catalog please send me an email to maria mariascraftingcorner.com and i will gladly send you a catalog um we're almost done with our holly holiday catalog and um but i will gladly send you one if you want to and um if you're interested in subscribing to Paper Pumpkin Kit, follow the link below and it will take you directly to where you can um, subscribe. Let's move to the crafting table. Okay, so I already have my little piece of paper, of white paper here, but I do want to show you. Um, these are the cards that you would have 
made if you follow the instructions as they built them gorgeous cards you cannot deny these are very beautiful cards i think they i mean out of to me so beautiful and so well done um each kit brings the instructions and i know i always show you this but it's called, it brings very very good instructions very self-explanatory easy to work on your own and also in the back it has all the details of what the kit brings um and it has the coordinating colors for stamping up so uh like bermuda bay and cherry color so it tells you which other colors um you can utilize of cardstock you can utilize to play with the with the kit in different alternatives now they also always bring some extra alternatives around here um that includes of course other, other uh, products right i like i mentioned i try very very hard to not use other products i want to stick to whatever we have available okay we're gonna work with a card that i've seen at lisa's stamp, stu stamp studio it's not a new card it has different names i've seen people call it a bridge card um Lisa calls it a spanner card. Um, bottom line, same as it always happens, it has a name, it has several names. So, you know, you name it however you want it. Let's go with spanner card just because it's the one I'm actually, like what the video I watched. Oh, it was a long time ago that I watched this video. Um, and I really like her style. So I really did not look for other uh, names uh, but again in Pinterest I've seen like all sorts of names so this is just a regular piece of eight and a half by five and a half and we're going to score this at half which is four and a quarter and I'm going to move this a tiny bit we're going to fold this a little bit so it helps us the guy because now we're going to cut we're going to align the five and a half inch side to a one and a quarter and we are going to cut from the edge to the score line now you guys know that I always try not to go further so as I get closer to the score line I'm just moving really slow making sure that I make it to the line and not any further we're gonna turn this around align again at the one and a quarter inch whoops there and we're going to do the same thing and just like i did before i will slow down as i get closer to my score line just make it easier for me and this is the base of the card i am going to bring my phone folder which is all of a sudden missing now here it is and we're going to go ahead and give a good burnish now we're going to be using this card base. I really like it. I love it. But it's going to work well, I think, when we create um, these. So I am going to cut this. I'm going to calculate the exact middle because we don't want to lose any of that, um, of the little stripe pattern paper I'm going to align here as well and we're going to cut this strip and we're going to do the same with the other side whoops align very well or as best as we can make sure that we are cutting and there we go so the next step is we are going to create this panel um, and this panel would be one and a quarter by four and a quarter. So that'll be one and an eighth by four and an eighth. So let's cut this at four and an eighth first. And now let's cut the panel. And we said one and an eighth. Okay, so there's one. And then we'll cut the other one, one and an eighth. 
and when you have a piece like this that you can't hold be mindful to cut from the bottom up the force you put in the blade will hold it still against the little lever here and so these are going to be our panels in here and now we are going to bring those other panels which are a tiny bit smaller and so let's see these are three quarter panels i'm going to cut this i'm going to cut it at four let's start playing with that first before we calculate this so i'm going to cut a tiny bit extra so another eighth so this will be three seven eighths I like this as is, okay? So we're gonna get the other piece, align it three seven eighths, and cut that one. Perfect. And these are going to be our panels for these sides. Now the center, so I wanna use this. If I use this against the white, it really looks nice in there, right? I keep thinking that I want to use like a little bit of pop of color we'll think about it anyways so let's leave the white because the other one was doing red like so and I like that too hmm decisions decisions let's see white. I think I'm gonna leave it only one one layer you guys know i love my layers so this piece is three by four and a quarter right so we and this measures three so that's why it's just exactly so we're going to go and move ahead here and i'm going to use the right side of my trimmer and align at one eighth and we're going to cut there and then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to align at one eighth and we're going to cut there. And I think this fits fairly okay. So that means we're going to do the same here. We're going to cut, I want to say another quarter here. Yeah. And there it goes. It's another eighth. I said another quarter in there. So now we need to figure out where to cut on the bottom side because that's a little a little different because we are going to encounter that you know the shapes are here. So I am just going to use not use cut in here and I'm going to mark it a little bit with my nail and I think that that's not really popping up a lot, but I'm just going to make a little mark in there so I don't lose which is the spot I need to cut and I am just going to bring it up here and all I'm doing is aligning these all these three different pieces I guess of the car of the card base and we're going to cut in between so now we can see all the stars not the stars all the snowflakes like so so as you can tell doing it the way we did we managed to make this um just a quarter of an inch smaller all around and it looks i think it looks wonderfully well the only thing that i keep wondering if it's if it's if i want to create something like this you know because it looks really good, but I think I'm going to leave it like this. Okay, so let's start building this. So I'm going to bring these two pieces first. And I am going to bring my stamping seal plus. You guys know I am pretty partial to it most of the time. I'm going to align these as best as we can in here. Remember that we're trying to leave, it's about it's about a quarter on each side, but the edges, the other edges, so it's about a quarter on the top and the bottom, but the other sides are more like, I would say probably like three eighths instead of a quarter, but it's good enough. It's not 
big enough that it makes a big difference, I think. And I really like it. And we'll do the next one. And the same, we'll be mindful that these, the top and the bottom edge are different than the side edges, right? And there we go. And now we'll bring these two panels to the front and I'm going to extend this. And we are going to put it here. The crumb cake panel is about an eighth smaller. You guys know I like my eighths, so we're going to be working with eighths on that side. And the same here. So just an eighth smaller. We're going to center this as best as we can, and there we go. And now for this one, we are going to use glue because it's probably the easiest on this case. And of course my glue, it's rebellious, so we'll see what's going on here. Now we're going to put some glue around here, so you can tell there was a blockage there on, the, on my glue. Okay, I'm just putting little dots around. I have said this many times, I'm really thankful that I got these this glue bottles with the smaller tip it has been a game changer for me just because i definitely am messy when it comes to glue we're going to align these in here and remember that it is a fourth right it's not an eighth and i know that i usually use eighths but there we go and that's how it's going to look for now. Two things. So the card calls for what I'm going to call a bridge. And that bridge will go between these two lines, between these two panels. And this will go underneath. I have been debating about how I want that. The cards I've seen put the panel in the back. And that kind of looks very good. But since I don't have a whole lot of stuff to put in here because of the card itself, I keep thinking that I want that panel to show just like so. So let's try to see how that works. So this is just the other piece that we have. This is five and a half. So I am just going to cut maybe an inch. And this, we said is five and a half. I'm gonna cut an eighth. So this will end up being five and three eighths. So here it is. Either we put it on the top like this, all the way, or we put it, disguise it on the bottom like this. I think I would put it there. Yeah, but we're still going to decorate these panel and I'm just using some glue and then this piano like so in the end I think it doesn't matter very much I'm actually going to center this This is going to be our pop-up color in the card. So now we're, it's the time to put the bridge in. And this should go in here. And I really want to make sure that it is covering this brown um, area. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it as is. So remember that the red piece is about an eighth smaller than the card. I'm going to hold it as is. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the sides and I'm going to glue them separately. Actually, let me put more glue. I don't know why I'm being so stingy with the glue. Now we're going to go one and we're going to go two. And while that dries, I am going to bring my Santa, so this Santa 
comes in the kit it brings the back and you have to stamp it on so here's an unstamp one and here's the stamp one so you have to stamp on it i stamp ahead of time i have mentioned this to you guys i really realize that i'm not very good at layering so i use my stamparatus to um, actually get this going and he is going to go in here i'm not going to stamp it yet because we're going to bring one of the other pieces from the card from the kit not the card <laughs> And this one I really like and we're going to stamp in here and it's going to be like so I think so we're going to have a little bit of the green a little bit of the stripey edge thingy and then these these and our Santa who is absolutely rebellious as you can tell in here okay so let's move this out of the way for a second and Let's figure what we can use there. And I love the Santa Claus is coming to town. Let's hope this fits in here. Oh, it does. How happy. I am going to actually bring my Stamparatus just because um, that way I don't have to put my big head in front of you. I found out that if I use a Stamparatus, it makes it so much easier um, for me to actually stamp straight without putting my head on in front of the camera. So I'm just putting our magnets there and I'm bringing the stamp. Okay, I'm looking to see if my head is there. It doesn't look like it is. I'm making sure this is straight. I think it is. There you go, okay. And now we're gonna use our stamp apparatus and we are going to bring our stamping ink and go ahead and get that all the way inked all the way one of the things i really like about the stamparatus is that you if you make a mistake you can just go back and re-ink again and go again at it and it just i love that okay so we have our little piece I'm going to leave this as is right there so I don't have to worry about it for now. And let's bring our piece in here. So Santa Claus is coming to town. And then I'm going to move it a little bit there. Okay, further. Maybe I'll change the side and put it on this side. Let's see. Maybe that's going to work better. I think it's not exactly centered, so I have a little bit of leeway here, but almost no leeway here. And I don't know if you can tell, it's a, it moved a tiny bit on the stamparatus, but I'm going to leave it as is. And I'm going to put some glue in here. Align these. We had said we want a little bit of the green, a little bit of the red, of the um, stripey. And then we're going to put Santa in here. And yes, I am going to use some dimensionals for it. I have, oh, now here's the bigger dimensionals. I have bigger dimensionals, which makes it a little bit easier. You guys know I like to use my dimensionals. And we're going to bring our Santa in. Our Santa's going to go, well, no, no, not right there, not right there, not yet. A little bit to the there okay so i didn't say much about this but you have to be mindful where you put the dimensionals so they are in the panel not off for some reason miraculous reason it actually happened to be that i did it right but that was kind of miraculous so we're going to work with this panel and my idea for this panel is using the ho 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 and so I think we can just cut it. And I just don't know if I want to use the cut in here. We'll see. Let's cut this first. So I'm just going to cut following this line, right? Following the letter is what I'm trying to say. So there's one hoe. <laughs> and there's the other hoe. Okay. 
And so we're going to put uh, the ho 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 in here. I just keep thinking that if we do do it in the white, it's going to pop up a tiny bit more. And so I'm going to follow up that. So I'm going to cut following the letter just as we did with before. And here. Okay. So. Where's my first toe? Perfect. So let's go ahead and use our glue to glue this. Probably uh, if you do it all together, it's much faster. I don't know why I was, I give it too much thought, but oh well, that's what happens sometimes. Okay, I'm just grabbing these so I can make a little bit better of centering it. Okay. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my craft sheet and we're going to work in here because it's probably so much better. You know, I have one ho ho ho. Yes, this is the right way. <laughs> and the other one. Okay, so this, oh, no, that one. This one should go here. And we'll go ahead and with our glue. So much easier to see than what I was trying to do before. <laughs> so, and the last one. I have to say guys, my hands look so disastrous, I just noticed, but I've been cooking all day long. I, I have sometimes just times that I really, really wanna cook and we we have um, still, so <laughs> Still some tomatoes left over. So I was making some 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 tomato soup and some good stuff and yeah, I was just paying attention to my hands, so you don't pay attention to them. How about that? Let's move our things. Keep forgetting that I have this amazing tool. And we're going to put the ho 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 in a way that it, it's visible like that. But when you put this, then it's still going to look cute on this side, right? So, so I'm going to close this and we're going to put the ho-ho-hos as it's closed. I think it's easier. Okay, so one. We'll bring the other one. Just a little bit of glue here and there. And finally, the last one. And that looks super cute. Now, for the inside. Oops, I hope that's not, at least it's not dirty, because oh my God, it kills me. So for the inside, I had ambition putting a red piece in here, but now it's not going to really fit. So let's go back in here. I'm going to use one of the envelopes and we're going to bring our trimmer and do what we've done in the past to cut this and open it. So we're going to cut this. I align it at the 16th mark and that just helps us make it, you know, cut exactly what we need to cut. And there we go. Now I want to use I'm trying to think how I want to do this. So I have decided I'm going to use this piece. So I am just going to cut it in half. As we have done in the past, I'm going to measure this a little smaller. Five and three eighths by four and one eighth. Okay. And so this piece is going to come in here as is. And we are going to cut a piece that is going to measure three by four. So let me bring, so it's going to measure three. Five, four and a quarter. 
the fourth and eighth, I'm sorry. So this piece is going to go exactly here and we are going to build in here with the red panels and these panels on decoration. Okay. I think I'm going to move these, cut these a tiny bit too. You guys know. So bottom line, this is going to measure two and seven eighths by four. Yes. And we're going to center this. And before we glue this, I'm going to put the other, the panels. I'm going to try first with a little piece of white cardstock instead. So if I cut this at one, I think they need to be one. That's my thought. So we'll put one in here, this one in the middle, and let's bring another one. Let's see. So we'll put one in the one here, right? An eighth, then this one as so, and so they could be a little bigger actually, that's what it seems. So I'm I'm actually going to cut them at one in one eighth. So one in an eighth. If we think it's too big, then we can cut it a little smaller. And then one and an eighth. Okay, I'm gonna put this aside. So back to our building board in here. And now we're going to bring this piece. <coughs> hmm, actually, you know what? I think I'm going to bring leftovers of these and I have a few okay let's cut this I'm gonna cut these first and now I'm going to cut these two because it obviously I'm gonna cut this area because that's an area we will not be able to use right and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And now we need, so this is four. I am hoping this we get, and I need to cut that little bump. I am thinking we can just cut it like so, right? Because that's three eighths there, three and seven eighths, not three eighths, and we are going to cut them. This is one and an eighth, so one. I think I like vertical lines better, but horizontal will do. In one. Okay. So let's bring. Before I go any further, this is our middle piece and I am just going to, so just like we did before, we're going to use my stamp apparatus to um, put the stamps just because it's easier for me and my big head is not in your way. And let me bring my stamps, oops. So here's one, it's still a little bit wet, let me. Try it well. And then we're going to put the Christmas in there. Seems like it's seems like it's all straight. My experience is I think one thing and my eyes see something and it never really is. And that was not supposed to happen. So we're going to turn this again. And let's see. Hmm.
Okay, that seems to be a good spot. And we're going to and go ahead. Oh my god, I do love it. Perfect. So we're going to move our Mary and I'm going to bring my chamois here and clean it in here instead. It's much easier than moving the stamps around and it also helps with the life of the stamp it's itself of the backing okay okay let's move my stamp right out of the way and let's start with the card i'm just cleaning my hand making sure it's all dry so this is going to be the piece that we're going to decorate and in spite of what I usually do, I'm going to put this piano first. So I'm going to hear this as best as I can, not like this. It's not very straight, is it? And this is just an eighth smaller, so we're going to center as best as we can and align. And this is why, because I want this piano to go exactly centered, and the, the only way to do this is by putting it there. And so now that I have it centered exactly where I want it, I'm going to bring my move up here, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to hold it and bring my glue, because we know how much more flexible glue is, and that it allows us some leeway. And I'm going to turn this a tiny bit this way, and we're going to do the same thing, and just put some glue all over in here as well. Okay. And now I know that these is going to, it's covered by this perfect, I'm off camera, I'm sorry, that these is going to cover perfectly this white area. And now we're going to bring our two other pieces. I don't know if you guys can tell, this piece has some like, I don't know how you call this, fuzzies? <laughs> now I'm just cleaning it all over so it looks good. And we're going to go ahead and, oh, I just wanted to measure this, I forgot. See, I think that that one eighth, it, look, it look works well. Okay, so... I'm just going to put some Stampin' Seal Plus and we're going to center this. It's an eighth smaller. You guys know that at this point in time I I can pretty much see where the eighth is at. <laughs> if it's not the same for you, then just take your time. Just this is not a this is not a, a race. Okay, we got one, and now let's do the other one. And the other thing you can use instead of Stampin' Seal Plus is probably you can use your glue. Um, in, and it also, again, it gives you some, some leeway to put the, um, position the panel or the paper or whatever it is exactly where you want it, right? So let's do this. So you. And so I'm going to come here and align as best as I can. And there you go. I'm going to move it a little bit to the center there. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but this needs a little bit of glue in here in this corner. And that's pretty much our card. Right? So we are going to use some of the um, gems it brings. I'm going to put another one of the big ones like up here and one of the smaller ones probably there. Oh my god, that is so cute. Isn't this super cute, super simple to make, but it really has that wow factor to it. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but I didn't make a mess here. I don't know how that happens to me all the time. So I'm going to bring 
some of these stars and we're going to put one there but just to these guys we're going to put a few one here and maybe one there and of course if you have other colors like red and green those are you know it will look wonderful with it um i just i'm using what the card brings so what you guys think isn't this super super cute and really really simple i hope you guys enjoyed the I hope you guys enjoyed today's card. It's a very simple card. Um, it would be really cool to use instead of this to use um, some acetate, for example, and you can either heat emboss it or use some stays on and stamp on the acetate. That would look super cool. You like this um, card? Okay, let me move back up. I hope you like this card. It is super cute and on top of that, it's not too complicated to make. You are using mainly what's in the kit. The only extra thing that we actually brought for this card is the Y cardstock. So really minimal um, add-ons to what's in the kit. And I think it's just a perfect addition to our collection. If you have like a I don't know, red cardstock or early espresso cardstock. You can try to make it um, with those instead. I um, just using what's in the kit. I thought about, you know, blending again um, my early espresso on the white. But I, in the end, I was like, oh, all the cards I've been making are with that color so i figured i had to try something different and i did want to make um a little bit of changes on it but i had like initially i thought about including some other things but i didn't in the end if you like the video please give it a thumbs up you know how much it helps us here on youtube and do subscribe to my channel if you like the general content of it if you feel like it please share the video it helps me getting to that thousand uh, subscribers and i would appreciate your support that way i hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day